Okay, so in this video, um, I'm going to try to explain the ideas behind linear independence spanning and bases to really get concepts um, firmly established in your minds. So the way it works basically is as follows. I'm going to use an analogy, and the analogy I'm going to use is that of um, the primary colors of light. Okay, so these are the primary colors, the primary colors of light. Now, uh, any art artists out there would don't get confused. Primary colors of light and primary colors of pigments are different. Primary colors of light, in fact, are the three uh, primary colors, red, green, and blue. So the three uh, primary colors of light are red, green, and blue. And we know this, uh, this well, the RGB screens or monitors, um, all your TV screens these days, all, all types of monitors use basically um, red, green, and blue. Uh, phosphorus dots, in fact. What they do is, basically, there are pixel dots, uh, phosphorus pixel dots that are uh, placed on the screen, and then light is basically, uh, as light uh, shines on these um, on these phosphorus dots, they emit, uh, they reflect the color. Now, by changing the intensity of red, um, of the, the phosphorus dots, uh, you can in fact produce any combination of colors so essentially what we're saying is that uh, if you were to take the right combination of red green and blue in fact you can produce any color uh, in existence now the the primary colors of light the reason they're called primary colors is if you were to use for instance uh, a red filter and shine light through that uh, you will discover that uh, by placing a green filter after it, there is no re uh, there is no red, and similarly, if you place place a blue filter after it, there is no red either. So what that means essentially is that uh, there is no green or blue in red uh, light, and there is no um, red or blue in green, and there is no red or green in blue, which essentially means that. The three of these colors cannot be obtained from the other two. And what does that sound like to you? Linear independence. So the primary colors of light can be considered as a linearly independent set. Independent set of vectors. Okay. So they can be considered as a linearly independent set of vectors. Now, by taking the combinations of the phosphor dots, as I said, which are on the screen, uh, you can, by shining light on them, you can actually get any combination of these. Because the dots are so small and uh, packed together, it's impossible for our eyes to actually see the dots, in fact. Now, you would have seen that in, in the older, very older, much older screens, if you went very close to the screen or put a magnifying glass on the screen, you would see some dots, for instance. Um, but this is what we call pixel density. So the, the best graphics, um, um, the best monitors are the, the highest resolutions are the ones which have the uh, pixel dot, dens the pixel density is the highest. So that, that which means the dots are smaller. And if they're, they're so small uh, these days that you can't see the dots, in fact. So, but here's the important thing. It's not, this is not an electronics or physics class. Important thing to understand is we're using this as an analogy. So you, you can think of it as in this way, that if you had the, if you have a, um, a red, um, say you have a red um, uh, dot or a red source of color light and you have a green source, okay, and you have your blue source, and you have your blue source. So if these three sources, if we take, you take a K, amount k1 amount of red and you add it to k2 amount of green and you add it to k3 amount of blue you can actually by changing these k's you can in fact produce any color so if we think of all the colors as a space of colors so we have the space of all colors for instance, is, let's call it V, is the space of all colors, then um, red, green, and blue, in fact, span V. And since red, green, and blue are 
all three as primary colors independent of each other. Therefore, they form a basis set that spans the space of that a basis set for all colors, in fact. So, in essence, a basis set is important because it looks at an infinitely large space and gives you control over the, I mean, it identifies or filters out the characters, characteristics of that space. Okay, it filters out the characteristics of that space and then, per, uh, and that basis set basically contains all the characteristics. Now, in this case, you can think of it this way. The red, green, and blue are the basic characteristics of all colors because they, in some combination, are present um, in all uh, basic, all colors that are in existence, in fact. So, uh, in the same way, um, if you go back to any examples that we've looked at, whether it's a polynomial, so you have 1x and x squared, the characteristics of a quadratic are the constant, the x term, and the x squared term. So by taking combinations of those, you can produce any quadratic. So in the same way, the, the, you, know, you can go to matrices. If it's a 2 by 2 matrix, you have four positions to play with. And looking at combinations of all four positions, you can produce any uh, two by two uh, matrix. So I hope this this helps you to understand the basic idea of of um, a linear independence spanning and basis, a very powerful concept, in fact. And I want you to think of a basis as giving you control or access to an infinite space of possibilities. Um, uh, it could be a very uh, it could be an infinitely large set. Uh, of colors, it could be um, a, uh, a an infinite set, a set of vectors, or um, which can be functions. It could be functions. It could be matrices. It could be um, uh, Rn space, for instance. It could be anything, in fact. Okay, and uh, these these spaces contain an infinite number of members um, or objects in them, and a basis set, which is a finite set of objects uh, from that same ba um, vector space can actually help you to understand all of those. So that's how I think of bases, and I hope that uh, you get some uh, conceptual idea of what a basis set is.